What's up? Welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Tales of the Empire, the new Star Wars Disney Plus anthology shorts animated series. Out now, of course, this is the follow-up to 2022's Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi featured six episodes revolving around Ahsoka Tano and Count Dooku. Tales of the Empire, a bit of a different tack. We're definitely using less profile characters here, this time Morgan Elsbeth and Barris Offee. And yeah, I'm going to go through all six episodes, what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I want from the future of Star Wars Animation and this Tales series. So I would say overall, I like Tales of the Empire less than Tales of the Jedi for, I think, a few key reasons. One, there's just not an episode nearly as strong as the Yaddle episode from Tales of the Jedi, which really stood out for being an amazing gap filler due to its relationship in and around the prequel films when the episode was taking place, being equal parts a key contextualization for Dooku's character during that time, as well as telling us a lot about side character Yaddle, who we really knew nothing about. This time around, Morgan Elsbeth, we know her fate. We saw what became of her in live action on Ahsoka, seeing how she came into the service of Grand Admiral Thrawn and how she survived the Separatist attack on Dathomir, wasn't the number one thing I needed to learn about. Barris Offee, I think, was certainly more interesting because her fate had been unknown ever since, you know, we last saw her on the Clone Wars 10 years ago. That was definitely a bit much stronger choice, but I was disappointed in the lack of clarity in her fate at the end of Tales of the Empire. Ultimately, I, I really dislike the fact that they left that character open-ended like the ambiguity is a bit frustrating to me you know in theory seeing more of the inquisitors more of the inquisitorious due to barris Offie's, you know uh, brief dalliance with them compelling you know certainly compelling seeing fortress inquisitorious uh under construction of course spending more time with the grand inquisitor vader cameo good stuff but yeah let's let's just kind of back up here and Start with the first three episodes, which are about Morgan. Notably, this was sequential this time with the characters. Episode one, you know, you get the Grievous cameo. Of course, the Separatist attack on Dathmir. We learned that Morgan was there and she survived. And we get to see the Mountain Clan of Dathomir, which I guess is kind of cool. But, like, basically all these three episodes, they just kind of amount to Morgan being on the warpath of revenge and personal glory. It's like, I get it. You know, it's like... Did I learn anything really that new about Morgan Elsbeth, a side character from Ahsoka? No. Episode 2, definitely stronger on, from the Morgan stuff with she's on Coruscant, uh, the TIE Defender pitch to the Imperials, a little bit of gap filling regarding the TIE Defender program and how that was a key aspect of Star Wars Rebels. Of course, she gets introduced to Pelelion and then later Thrawn. Of course, we see her on Corvus where we first met the character during Mandalorian when Ahsoka debuted. Then episode three, more time on Corvus, the New Republic envoy gets uh, killed, you know, basically directly tying into how Morgan is uh, met by Ahsoka on the Mandalorian. That's like basically where we leave off with that third episode. Side note, don't know why she decided to light all those forests on fire with the flame guys for no reason. Like, what was the point of that? What a waste. Um, but yeah, I just don't think there was a whole lot like additive about these episodes even if they give you a little bit more context about morgan's relationship with thrawn how that came to be it's always fun to spend more time with thrawn we love lars mickelson's performance but like i don't know it's just like it's a high bar when the first anthology series is around count dooku and ahsoka and then our next one we start off with morgan like it's just not my top choice episode four the first barris episode it was kind of interesting seeing that with Order 66, the Inquisitors seemingly were already, like, basically started, like, right away. Like, the timeline was much more con con uh, crunched down than I would have expected with that. Kind of cool that the Bear Bears knew uh, the fourth sister. That was interesting. You get the cameo of Merrick from Ahsoka. I think people are definitely asking for more from that. Kind of foolish to expect that. Some of the other Inquisitors are on screen as well, like the one Ahsoka kills in Tales of the Jedi. Episode 5, probably the best set piece of... The series with that duel on the mountaintop in the smoke, pretty fun. Pretty wild, though, that the four sister gets yeeted off a cliff, but somehow survives. Uh, fun stuff there. Episode six, though, like Barris, Barris kind of being more of like a gray, gray Jedi Force user type, just helping the common man, seemingly in line with where her character's thoughts were about institutions like the fo like the Jedi and also like the Inquisitors when she abandons them. Um, makes sense. I just wish there wasn't such ambiguity about her fate in episode six with the fourth sister seemingly you know kills her but not 
you know. Also, the four sisters turn back to the light seem pretty uh, forced and quick. It, it kind of just speaks to when you're trying to tell like a lot of story, apparently with three short episodes. We're talking like 15 minute episodes. It's short for sure. It's just going to feel a bit rushed. So I would have appreciated this more if it was just more of a definite open and closed book regarding plot. Like, cause again, Bears Offy, a character we spent a lot more time with than Morgan Elizabeth, but also a side piece, a prequel era character that does not have a long future, despite the kind of ridiculous theorizing that has led to Barriss Offy's name coming up quite often in the Star Wars world. Unfortunately, they just left that wide open again. I think that's a bit frustrating. Moving forward, though, whether they do another Tales of the Jedi, another Tales of the Empire, Tales of the Sith, whatever it might be, I like this as like an opportunity to fill in gaps and just do more like kind of lore dumps, really. That's why I thought the Yaddle episode was so brilliant from Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Sith would be cool, though, especially seeing young Palpatine, Plagueis. Like, uh, the possibilities are endless on that front. And if it's going to be m- smaller characters again, I would love Chirrut from Rogue One. Um, that would be, I think, a layup for a sh- this kind of format. There's a lot of potential, for sure. I would just love more prequel stuff, to be honest, just spending time with prequel Jedi in and around that time frame or we could even go backwards you know moving forward once we get the acolyte high republic times like just kind of do do fun stuff and i think tales of the blank can exist kind of similarly to how star wars visions exists where it's kind of low stakes star wars storytelling of course this is the can variety but there's still a place for it so i enjoy it not mad about anything nonetheless would you like most about tales of the empire i think i would lean the bear stuff uh over the Morgan stuff overall, even if I didn't love either of it. But do you agree that Tales of the Jedi was superior? Either way, let me know. And for more Star Wars, more TV reviews, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.